uh, Archana ma'am, may I please request you to switch on your video? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. A very good evening to all of you. On behalf of KLE Society's KLE College of Law, Navi Mumbai, I, Professor Pooja Bijagi, welcome you all. I will be hosting today's event along with Professor Salim Khan, who would be moderating today's session. Our guest speaker for today, Mrs. Arjana Shastri, ma'am, has joined us. A very warm welcome, ma'am. I would also like to thank our management for giving us this guidance to organize this fourth national webinar series. Dr. Prabhakar Kore, sir, Chairman of KLE Society. Mr. Mahantesh Kavadgi Matsar, GB Chairman, KLE College of Law. MLC and Chief with Karnataka Government. Dr. Mallika Arjunaya, sir, Principal, KLE Society Law College, Bangalore, and Director, KLE Law Academy, Bangalore. Our beloved Principal, sir, Professor Dinkar Gitte, sir, for his continuous blessings and guidance to organize this fourth national webinar series. The guest speaker for today, Mrs. Arjuna Sastri, ma'am, is going to enlighten us on the topic of prevention of sexual harassment of women at Workplace Act 2013. I would now request Professor Salim Khan, sir, to take over the session. Salim, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Pooja, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Uh, I will be moderating the session today. Uh, before we proceed ahead, I would like to request our principal, sir, uh, Professor Dinkar Gitte, to kindly address the webinar. Principal, sir. Uh, sir, sorry to interrupt, but uh, Principal, sir, would be joining us soon. So, okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, okay, fine. Talk. Taking this ahead, uh, we will proceed. Uh, before we start the session, uh, I take this privilege to introduce uh, the guest of our chief guest today. Uh, our speaker for the day is Ms. Archana Shastri. Uh, one thing, let me uh, you know, except in front of everybody, uh, while trying to make an introduction of Madam uh, to be presented before the audience over here, I was really in a dilemma of what should I say and what should I should not say. A very heavy CV with so much of achievements and so much of things. Madam, please forgive me if I miss some, achieve, some, some part of the uh, introduction, ma'am. Uh, ma'am is a uh, a behavioral NLP practitioner and also a, a posh consultant. Ma'am has done her MA in English literature from Vikram University. Uh, Ma'am has also done a BSc in biology from Barkatullah University, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, Ma'am has done a BA in Lucknow University, DFAR from Madhya Pradesh Technical University, Bhopal. And currently, Madam is pursuing PGDCA in gender sensitization from IGNU. Uh, Ma'am have a number of certifications. To name a few, she has a certification from Dale Carnegie, USA, uh, Posh Act certified, certified NLP practitioner, certified emotional intelligence, certified English language, etc., and many more. Uh, Ma'am is having 22 years of ex experience in a cross industry in building and leading strong sustainable teams to achieve business. To name a few industries ma'am have worked with is banking and financial sector, retail, FMCG, manufacturing, media, IT industry, government organization, health center, BPO, education, etc. You name the industry and ma'am have worked for this industry. Uh, ma'am is an eminent speaker and facilitator on the topic of the sexual harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention, Prohibition, and Redress Act 2013. Uh, there are many more things to be said, but we would we are very eager to listen to our speakers for the day. Hence, uh, I would conclude the introduction over here, and I request ma'am uh, to start with her presentation. We, uh -huh. I welcome you, ma'am, on behalf of the Kelly Society and Kelly College of Law to this webinar. And it's our pleasure to have you here, ma'am. 
thank you thank you salim so and uh, thank you kle society for giving me this platform to connect with many uh, believe me this particular topic prevention of sexual harassment of women at workplace is very very close to my heart so whenever i get a chance i just get i just bump into this particular opportunity and i prefer that uh, I, i should uh, talk on this topic uh, as much as because awareness is something which is very very important particularly when we talk about this many people are not even aware that there is a law there is an act which is talking about prevention of sexual harassment many of the cases goes unnoticed so before i start i will just take your permission so that i can share a ppt and then we will start uh, on this so sure ma'am please i hope my screen is visible to everyone yes ma'am it is visible yes ma'am yeah uh, ma'am ma'am there's a request ma'am can you please uh, once again check with the settings of annotate uh, let me just see i had disabled actually yeah yeah okay thank you ma'am thank you uh i hope i have disabled <laughs> i tried my best to disable but i mm -hmm. hope i have that uh so welcome everyone to this particular topic that is prevention of sexual harassment of women at workplace as i said this is something which is very close to me and i am one among the pioneers who started uh giving consultancy on this particular topic done a uh, lot of consultancy with many of the companies and uh, still going on we actually yesterday also there was one of the sessions i took on this where i realize that people are really not aware about uh, there is there is any such law or there is any such committee where we can go and complain so today's topic we are going to talk more and more on this i will be talking more on a legal part also if anything happens how we are going to talk on this uh one thing which uh, i mean let me uh, honestly talk, tell you that you know when i started where people were not aware and people were not ready to conduct the sessions on this topic it was a taboo topic to talk people uh, were say were telling me that how we are going to talk in front of all male or if you are going to talk then only uh, there will be batches divided as per the genders so one batch will be only for male and one batch only for females so i always used to tell them that please do not do this it is something which both of the both the genders must know it is something which uh, which is included i mean which includes both the genders so we i always prefer that the topic should be conducted in the big batches the another thing which i felt i mean initial hiccup was with this particular sessions was that oh we don't have any female employees working in our organization so why are you going to conduct this topic so there are a lot of myths surrounding this uh, there is another one that if you conduct this particular sessions then the number of cases number of complaints uh, is going to go higher so that uh, so that is that's what the challenges i used to face and then uh, there was something uh, i mean this particular case happened i'm sure all of you are aware about this tanushree datta's case tanushree datta and nana patikas one after this all, all of all of a sudden there was a me too movement started all over india number of cases increases uh, it is not that number of cases increases cases were happening but the number of complaints increased i will say so after this me too movement i am sure all of you had uh, gone through a lot of media news lot of newspaper on this topic so uh, i mean in the year 2019 nana nana patekar was set free uh, this came up almost like you know it was uh, the case was in 2008 and tanushri datta reported that in 2018 almost after 10 years 10 years she took courage to talk about the sexual harassment 
so uh, how, why it is not valid why it is valid there are a lot of things happening there are like you know there are people supporting tanushri datta there are people supporting nana patekar i don't want to go in detail with this particular thing but just why i am uh, bringing up this particular me too movement in india why, because after this i saw there is a lot of awareness happening lot of uh, you know the buzz around the industry happening and then everyone started talking about the compliance uh compliance part in the uh, companies so uh very very important over here we are going to talk about as please remember when we when there is a murder the murder is of a physical frame murder is of a body but when there is a rape case happening it is something where where we are uh, suppressing a human soul you know it degrades the soul of a woman something which is very very sensitive we must remember this why while we also remember that like you know we talk about india we as an indian very very proud india is number one country in xyz we talk india is a world cup you know a world cup champion of cricket or india is uh, number one in uh, other factors also however there is one shameful thing which i really want to highlight today is about this the rape cases in india india is number 1 in the rape cases also and this is something which is shameful for all of us when we talk about india as a spiritual capital when we talk about india as a religious capital when we talk about uh, a lot of cultural things in india then why these cases are coming up why india is number 1 this is a point we should ponder on i also wanted to highlight that in this the, the entire act is known as the sexual harassment of women at the workplace to uh, 2013 prevention prohibition and redress there are three things mentioned in this particular act so what what do i mean by this the what is the approach of prevention prohibition and redress so when you say see that that prevention is nothing but to keep or to banning uh, something from happening to stop something from happening to hinder the advances the what is about the prohibition when we talk about the prohibition it is ban completely stopped like like where how we see that parking is prohibited in this area spitting is prohibited in uh in the particular area similarly in this particular act the prohibition is also mentioned along with that there is a redressal procedure also given in this act if anything happens how to set it right how how to handle this complaints you will be surprised to see on the slide that you know the wipro is the highest among the cases registered in 2019 financial year and the calendar year both i will say then there is infosys then there is tcs so what does that mean that mean is that that the wipro is unsafe place to work no not at all wipro is most safest place i will say because they made their employees uh, to know about the act the awareness is over there i think i just give me a second i have a disabled uh, annotation part i think so give me a second i will again try to okay sorry uh done so uh, when i say like you know the after this uh, in 2019 if you can see 500% cases jumped iocl uh, there are a lot of navratna companies are also having certain i um, mean the posh cases registered even the google has acknowledged that they also got the posh case uh, i mean uh, the case registered in their organization so this is something which is very very important that everyone should be aware uh, it is not only the legal responsibility of the organization but it is also the moral responsibility of everyone i mean each and every indian it is a moral responsibility that we should protect we should respect each and uh, i mean we should respect everyone in the organization or wherever we are working so in today's session i am going to talk about this thing now first part is the prelude part then we are going to talk about what is there in the into vishakha guidelines 
we were also going to talk about the posh act rules 2013 um i am going to talk about the committees that is internal committee and the local committee if anything happens what is the redressal procedure and finally um for the organization we are going to talk about what are their managerial tools in this uh i will try to cover as much as possible in this one hour session normally when i conduct the awareness session we uh, i need half a day program because i do more on a interactive basis however this is more on a lecture basis i am going to give today so the first part which i wanted to say is this particular act is based on uh the articles 14 15 article 19 and article 21 when i say article 14 15 it is a fundamental right which we are going to talk about it is fundamental right of equality everyone uh, i mean uh, to prohibit any discrimination as an indian citizen i have this right there is there should be no discrimination based on any ground the religion caste creed uh, maybe gender or even the place of birth so if i have i am an indian citizen i have this right the another one which is article 19 which also talks about all the citizens to practice uh, any profession so i have a right to choose any profession i can i can work in any field irrespective of my gender irrespective of my religion irrespective of my place of birth or the language i am speaking or mother caste or the religion i am following all those things similarly when i talk about the article 21 that article 21 Uh, sorry to interrupt, ma'am. Sorry to interrupt, uh, but the slides are not visible, ma'am. Ma'am, kindly unmute yourself. Archana, ma'am. Mm, one minute. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's visible. Yeah, ma'am. Please disable uh, the annotate and then uh, because I think you have again shared the slide. Okay. It is already uh, disabled. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, done. So my slides are visible now. okay so yeah. the another another thing which is included in this particular act is like convention on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women so this is cadaw um, convention where they had added the article 11 and article 24 when i talk about article 11 article 11 is all about equality to employment uh which can be seriously impaired when women are subjected to gender specific because you know many of the organization even today uh, let me be very honest on that part there are many of the training or the facilitator requirement where they where they clearly mention that only male, male members should apply preferred male you know that is something which is illegal i mean being law students you all know about it we cannot say uh, that only male male preferred or only male should apply where today we know that all even the female are traveling to moon so this is something which is uh, already mentioned in this particular act uh, it has also taken consideration of article 24 when i say article 24 it is adopt all necessary measures to national level to achieve full realization of all the rights so awareness programs are conducted on this uh, this is something which is included so ca daw and then this article is also uh, i mean this act is also talking about the indian penal code the uh, 1860 when i say indian penal code you know all the uh, uh, all the sections section 254 so section 3 
354, Section 370, or Section 509. You being all the law student, you all know about this. This is all against the modesty of the women, the forceful sexual intercourse, or criminal act against the women. All those uh, things are included in this particular act. There is another reason, another thing which is included in this is all about the industrial uh, or the labor laws, the M Industrial Employment Act, which is again taken consideration while framing this act, in the, which is into 1946. So the employers uh, should should take steps uh, to include all the prohibitions they had asked the industrial employment. Uh, you know, they they had asked that appropriate work conditions should be provided to respect the work issues. You will not believe. Uh, I just I was telling you about uh, that only male members preferred. So one of the organization where they had plotted an advertisement of the trainers that you know only male members preferred. That was manufacturing unit. So when I approached them and I said I can do this topic really well, please. Uh, I mean, if you want. So they said no, ma'am. We cannot give. We already mentioned only male. So I I asked why you are asking about only male members. So they said, you know, in uh, manufacturing sector we have only uh, only one gender working that is male. Second, we don't even have washrooms for female. And then I said that is highly discriminatory thing. Even if no female working, you should have one specific washrooms for female members, because even you you might have clients visiting at your place. So you cannot say that this is the reason we are not allowing you to take the sessions in our manufacturing units. So this is something which uh, which is against the law that uh, manufacturing company was doing. So I just wanted to share on this. Uh, the next which we are going to talk about let's see let's see what is the exact definition given in uh, a posh act 2013 i'm again and again telling it as posh act 2013 that does not mean that it was not be there before we will talk on that also so the uh, the definition is exactly as it is something which is sexual harassment is unwelcome Sexual advances, request, or favors, or in form of verbal, visual, or physical conduct. So the I highlighted the word unwelcome over here, which is very very important. It's a keyword. All the keywords I had highlighted in red over here in the slide. So when I say unwelcome, anything which is unwelcome, forget about the sexual harassment. Anything which is unwelcome. How do we feel? We feel stressed. we see we feel oh why the problem is here now we feel uh, illegal we feel it is intimidating in my privacy when anything which is unwelcome i never expected the word unwelcome is nothing but it is i never expected that so how i will feel i feel angry i feel frustrated i feel you know why why they are forcing me which is unlawful there are i mean i can keep on talking on the word unwelcome entire day about my feelings feelings is something which is very very important over here so if something which is unwelcome someone said no or someone is feeling that uh, you know it is not required then it is unwelcome So remember the word unwelcome whenever we talk about the sexual harassment. The word harassment itself is saying that it is going beyond the limit, which I never ever expected, which I never ever thought. Why I'm calling it as an harassment when once I said stop it, then why are you doing it again and again? And then that's why I call it as an harassment. Even if I just take an example, even just offering a simple tea. If some, if if you visit someone's office or someone's home, and someone offers you a tea, a cup of tea, and if you if you like it, you will say yes, I want it. Probably, if you may, you may not be a tea tea drinker. You can say, oh, okay, I don't like tea. You can offer me coffee. but the person is held bound that you must drink that tea because i offered you it is my welcome gesture and you must drink that tea whatever the condition whether you are ill whether you don't like it whatever then then i may call it as an harassment isn't it or if i if if the person is saying you know 
if i am visiting an organization and the person is offering me the tea and they said that tea is the criteria that based on this you will get the assignments based on this you will get the employment if you are going to drink this tea then you are going um, to get the promotion or your bills will be passed there are so many things is that fair no exactly not i may call it as an harassment i will feel this is unwelcome because while offering the job this was not mentioned that the tea is one of the criteria i must drink similarly when just this is this is what i am calling as an harassment what kind of an harassment it is tea harassment so similarly if anything which is coming up as sexual harassment i mean something which is in which is sexual in nature asking about sexual requests advances favors i will call it as sexual harassment so i hope that the word unwelcome is very very clear to you if someone said no stop it once no is no for always right there is there are certain words which i already mentioned is unreasonably interfering in my work i as as i gave you an example of tea so tea is the reason which is you know if i am not going to drink tea maybe i my bills are not clear maybe my files are not clear or maybe you know the arrangements for my training rooms are not done properly there may be many things so that is interfering in my work probably the because of this i may decide that i don't want tea so i may decide that i don't want to work with this particular organization i will resign from the organization my employment is hampered it, you know so it is it should be intimidating it should be hostile enough it should be offensive enough and it should be unreasonably interfering why i am i am just uh, pointing out this words unwelcome or all those which is written in red because most of the people have this wrong notion that you know once done once it is there and it will come under the sexual harassment of course there are certain things which will be once enough enough like rape cases or maybe grabbing or maybe kissing forcefully this will be once enough to be to be counted as sexual harassment but there are certain other things which is okay which should be like repetitive enough so please remember this when whenever we are going to talk about what is sexual harassment let's let's see now what comes under i mean other other definitions or uh, under this particular posh act 2013 so when i say posh act 2013 there are three uh, three to four definitions more given over here let's go one by one when i say aggrieved women who is aggrieved woman so aggrieved woman can be uh, you know uh, the working woman the aggrieved woman can be the visiting uh, visiting person anyone who is visiting your organization or your campus and a student also so aggrieved women can be anything it is not necessarily the person should be under your under the payroll for and the right from the domestic help till the top of the company all are covered under this the contract employees the interns students voluntary workers the ngo workers whether they are getting monetary benefit or not they are also covered under the definition of aggrieved women so everyone who is uh, visiting the campus for the business purpose are, uh, is uh, called as aggrieved women remember today i am just talking about at work place so posh at um, i'm talking only about the workplace so whenever whenever i talk about the workplace workplace is wherever the business is happening so the definition of workplace is not only the premises where you are it can be wherever you are for the work purpose it can be annual meeting at agm held at a hotel or traveling for business meeting um, in hotel or traveling for business purpose in public transport or maybe uh, you know even for the official picnic organized by the company that everything will uh, will be considered as work purpose workplace so wherever you are 
whichever place you are for the work purpose the business purpose it will be called as workplace um, the very uh, i mean the, the example of this definition i'm sure you might uh, remember or many of you may be remembering about the tehelka.com tarun tejpal's case which happened at uh, goa literary fest so the tej uh, tarun tejpal uh, molested the intern who is working with him in the that literary fest in in the elevator so she was there for the work purpose that's why it is called as workplace so then let's talk about the definition of an employee employee is who whose over is giving the employment the management the contractors who are giving the contracts all those will be covered under the employee uh, who is managing the day to day thing even the operations managing the operations they are called as employee oh, oh sorry employer i'm i'm really sorry the definition of employer Uh, employer and when i talk about the employee employee is whoever is working who i mean i already mentioned it's not only under the payroll but the interns even the voluntary workers or the domestic workers even the third party vendors who are working in your organization they all come under this act so right from the security guard till the head of the company everyone is covered under this definition so uh, let's go uh, the next slide which is going to talk more about the types of sexual harassment there are two types of sexual harassment one is quid pro quo and the another one is hostile work environment so when i talk about the uh, quid pro quo this is very simple this for that in exchange of you do this you agree for my sexual advances you agree for the sexual favors you agree for the sexual request and in with and then you will get promotion then you will get employment then you will get the salary raise appraisals or uh, any particular assignment any particular work that is direct this for that for the students it can be like you know if you agree for all all the all this thing you will get good marks you will be awarded uh, phd you know you you will you will be successful in your examination all those things so that is cute pro q when i talk about the hostile work environment hostile work environment is a kind of an indirect work environment when i say if people the person normally in this condition is not saying directly anything but creating an environment against the lady in such a way that it is very difficult for her to work for example if student is not agreeing on um, if the student is not agreeing on this particular request or the favor then the person will create that the this student may not be able to give her exam or maybe asking some very difficult question in the viva or maybe you know uh, giving very less marks so that she can come to the or she can say okay i i agree on that so kind of creating an hostile work environment which is very unsafe for me unsafe physically and mentally both so that is called as hostile work environment over here so there are two types uh being an external member of many of the companies what i had observed uh, i mean my particular experiences is um, there are less cases of cute pro quo and there are more cases of hostile work environment people do not have guts to talk uh, directly on this part so what they do is they create indirect they create indirect pressure on the person they create an hostile work environment that's what so what kind of conduct comes under um, sexual harassment so there is a slide which i have prepared for you all and that, this is like uh, the as i already mentioned the verbal the non verbal and the physical so the physical baby you know the touching the hugging the kissing or grabbing someone will or even even touching the clothes touching hair will come under the sexual harassment when i talk about verbal all the words we all the words in which are which have uh, sexually colored remarks now it is very common uh, sometimes you know like calling someone uh, as just very simple as greeting so good morning good afternoon hi hello or shaking hand is okay however if someone calls the other person as hi sexy or uh, hey beautiful then it will be covered it will it, it will be included into the verbal sexual harassment 
probably it is not once i mean if someone calls someone as high sexy or high beautiful and the person objected please do not please call me by my name archana i am objecting on this then that stopped then it will never be considered as sexual harassment okay so there are certain words especially uh, the gender based insults which is very common in india i am i am very upfront on this part but this is what i had observed is a very common language uh, especially with all the new generation using lot of f words probably you know every sentence ends or starts with f I, and uh, maybe uh, for the students it is like it's so what it's cool why why are you taking this as an oh, this i really wanted to highlight something over here it's nothing about your intention it is not at all about your intention it is all about the impact on the other person so another keyword i really wanted to give you is intent and impact whatever my intention in my intention might be good my intention is just to make a fun but what is the impact on the other person please remember that court or even the committee members are always going to talk about what is your impact on the other person you know the words made impact so intention versus impact is something which we must always remember while speaking with other person or why even even uh, how you are acting or how you are behaving in front of the other person so intention is not not important the impact on the other person is very important so using gender based insult are it's very, normally people will say are it's very common why are why you are taking it as an offensive thing but remember that uh, use always parliamentary language when you are working when you are when you are a professional it is always good to use parliamentary language the language which you cannot write in your right the same language you cannot use also so there is all the organizations have their own code of conduct disciplinary policies please read that and it it is also mentioned over there to use parliamentary language because most of the time the language or the gender based insults are female oriented i uh, i am i mean it's really shameful but something which i wanted to highlight today you, i will also wanted to say that god has given us wonderful language a beautiful language why why we want to use that language we have good words the kind of words you are using the kind of person you are and the kind of uh you know the destiny you are inviting for yourself that is another topic which i conduct uh, sessions on but today i just wanted to highlight on this that intent versus impact so the verbal verbal can be in like the words you speak the words you have written it can be in sms it can be in your whatsapp message even the social media is taken into consideration the kind of it is also the kind of pornographic images shared in non verbal or uh, the videos shared even the emojis shared will be considered in this unnamed notes you know uh, even uh, uh, you know kind of uh, the gestures made the sounds made which will be considered in uh, sexual harassment uh, fine so non verbal i already said the gestures the hand movement the facial expression the the sound the particular sound you made the body language very simple example i really wanted to give you is this if i just mention this you will give me thousand meanings for one thumbs up it can be thumbs up it can be like do it okay well done superb good job go on up so many things with this one thumb if i just put my thumb down and you will tell me that okay this is somewhere oh it's degrading dislike down i don't like it okay don't do it it's not good and many more things right if i just use my thumb this way you will say oh it's this side left this person right or if i just say this it's like drink 
So I hope with the one single thumb, one single thumb, and I am giving you so many meanings. I can talk about this when I talk when I do the body language session. It's an entire day session. So you know uh, this one particular thumb, and you can see things goes on. So just if, just remember when you're speaking with other person, you're using your entire body. You're using your face. You. You know, so uh, the lot of lot of messages are passed through uh, your body language also. So uh, that's that's what I really wanted to talk about the that uh, physical, verbal, and non-verbal, right? So this is all uh, included in the definition of sexual harassment, which I already mentioned. I'm sure you are enjoying the session. You are liking it. If you like it, just put it on the chat box. Uh, later on, I can see uh, from Amrita. All the questions we will be taking in the end from your side. Let's let, let's go to the next, which is uh, next topic, which is Vishakha guidelines. So when I say Vishakha guidelines, Vishakha guidelines is something which is, uh, uh, I mean, people posh act. That is posh act is also many of them are calling it as Vishakha guidelines. So uh, being a law student, you all know what is the difference between act. And law, law is just mentioning. For example, just mentioning that uh, spitting is prohibited in public area, but government has not given the detail how to prevent it, how to prohibit it, and how if anyone spits, how to handle that, isn't it? But however, when I when we say act, it is the entire Bible or entire guideline given to you on this. That's why it is called as act, not as the law. Okay, so mm, the entire things are covered. Uh, why it came up in 1997, Vishakha and others versus State of Rajasthan, and that was acknowledged over there. It all started with, uh, I mean, the there are two to three major major cases happened in India, which is the base of this particular Posh Act. So when I say to, uh, the may one of the major case was of Bhavri Devi in Rajasthan. Uh, many of you might have even heard about her. She was working as Sathin for women and women oriented NGO who was I mean they are all into women development programs. So they are uh, like you know the girl child education. They are into girl child marriage, girl child abortions, all those things. So uh, this Bhavri Devi was from the Potter community, and uh, she was uh, she was working as uh, something with uh, one of the NGOs over there. And one of uh, Akhati Teach, Akhati Teach is considered as a very auspicious day for Hindus, where without any uh, you know when they, without any mood or any very auspicious time, the entire day is considered uh, considered as good to. Uh, uh, for the weddings so that particular day the head of the village uh, or the granddaughter was getting married she was girl child very small and this lady opposed however uh, that day the marriage uh, i mean the marriage was didn't happen but otherwise the next day the marriage happened the head of the village has taken it against his own pride so you know uh, so what he did is he um, he with his uh, brother, uh, nephews and son went into the field and gang raped her and brutally beaten her husband. So that, uh, and then they, they tried to register the complaint, but like as Indian system, uh, the policeman, the doctor, no one was ready to register the complaint. So that, you know, that happened in 1992 with her. Where is she today? outcasted from the community. She is given like gaon nikala. She is living all alone and still fighting the case. There is a good documentary made on her on BBC also. She is still fighting the case. And one of the, you know, even uh, the one of the member from that uh, five men already went uh, to heaven. He is no more now. But still, she is fighting the case. So Vishaka has filed uh, the PIL, and that's why they are. This is called as 
you know, Vishakha guidelines. Uh, because the women NGO was involved in this, so there was a lot of hangama in parliament, a lot of uh, uh, the things happened. And then in 1997, the government has passed this guidelines uh, for everyone. But what happened? Before that, it was just like, you know, action against women modesty. But then after this case, all the NGOs said the, the women who are working uh, on a voluntary basis, like uh, Bhavri Devi, what will happen to her? Who is going to take care of her safety? So after that, they had included all the women who are going out for the work purpose, right from my maid, right from the maid servant who is coming out, who is coming at our workplace. From there to CEO of the company, everyone is protected under under this particular act. Uh, so let's see, uh, let's see, like you know, when I when I'm talking about this. So earlier, as I already mentioned, it was like you know, section 354 was considered, but later on, after this, this is so. What is there in Vishakha guidelines? We are going to talk more on the Vishakha guidelines. What is there on the Vishakha guidelines? Uh, these are all the important dates uh, which is mentioned over there. So you can see, like you know, after 1997, there was like a long break. But then later on, there was Nirbhaya case happened. Again, there was like, you know, all the women in Jews, they started talking about it and they pressurized the government that they should, they must pass. Uh, I mean, they must do something for women's safety. So after, uh, in 2013, government made it mandatory or it is a compliance for all the organization to follow it. So that's why it is Posh Act. 2013 uh, over here. So all the important dates I had already given on the slides for you all. So that's all about this uh, Posh Act, uh, uh, I mean, Posh Act and Rules 2013. Now let's understand what is, uh, what is considered or what is included in this particular thing. So I guess I have 20 more minutes to go. Yeah. So when I say IC, uh, when I say uh, ICC or LCC, it is uh, earlier it is called as Internal Compliance Committee and the Local Compliance Committee. Uh, the, what is the major reason why people are not reporting cases? Why people why people are not reporting cases? One is like you know, as I already said, Bhavri Devi is still fighting. Uh, it's been more than two decades, or the, so longer judicial process. The second reason is like, you know, the financial thing, the money matters, right? The law, the fees of the lawyer, the, I mean, even if someone is working, the, the lady has to take leave and go to the court cases and all those things. There is another thing, which is embarrassment, social stigma related to this. Women are not ready to talk about it. They feel that, okay, if I report this so in the society, everyone will be knowing about it. So that is also one of the major reason people are not. The, the third thing is the kind of questions asked in the court. I'm not comfortable to speak on that uh, in front of unknown people. All, all these things are considered by the government and then they had made the ICC and LCC. So what is ICC, Internal Compliance Committee and LCC, Local Compliance Committee. When I say ICC, it is at the organization's level. And when I say LCC, it is at the district officer level. The working of both the committees will be same. So whatever I'm going to talk about, it is for bo both the committees, it is same. So when I say ICC, Internal Compliance Committee, government has asked all the organization, uh, government has asked all the organization to uh, create, I mean, to make a committee, the organization especially, those who are 10 or more than 10 employees working. So they have to make ICC. So the, wherever the 10, irrespective of the gender, it's even if all the 10 male members are working, they have to, they have to form uh, the internal complaints committee. Now it is also called, uh, called as IC, internal committee. So 10, uh, 10 or more IC should be formed. And local committee is at the district level, uh, district uh, officer level, Jilla Adhikari, right? So now let's see what is there. I mean, how the committee is constituted. So committee in the committee, there are minimum, uh, I mean, five members should be there. 
fifty percent, more than fifty percent actually, fifty percent female. So it's like you know, a five, three female and two male members. The head of the committee must be must. I mean, should be a lady. It is must. It is very important. The chairperson of the committee should be a lady. The lady should be matured enough and experienced enough, and in a senior position, so that she can take unbiased. Uh, I mean, unbiased decision. If in your organization there is uh, no matured or the senior position lady, you can ask from your sister companies, or maybe you can ask from uh, the other sectors or other companies also. So that is very important. The second lady again from the organization. There should be uh, preferably two male members in the committee. Why? Because it should have a, uh, I mean, unbiased view when they are going to hear the cases. There is fifth member in the committee, uh, which is from. Uh, this should be again a very big myth that the person should be only from the NGO. It or only the the fifth external member should be a lady. No, a, a male member can also be the part as an external member, and uh, the this external member should have worked for women cause or should be well aware like how I know about this particular act. Uh, or you know working with the ngo so that's the reason ngo is like very easy because ngos are working for women cause okay so uh, this committee has got the similar right as civil court so whatever the decisions given by this committee will be the last uh, i mean uh, will be the final decisions no one can challenge that there are a lot of cases i mean because of the time constant i cannot talk about those cases but you can visit and there are a lot of cases where the committee decisions were challenged but the court has said committee's decision will be the last decision based on the context uh, so this is how the committee is going to uh, form Let's go to the constitution of the committee. I already told you the tenure of the committee is minimum three years, and then they have to form the new, uh, the new committee. Uh, let's see now. Uh, the similarly, the things are happening with the LCC also. I already mentioned about this, so I'm just skipping this slide uh, at the moment. The local complaints committee. Any member who has cased against him cannot be the part of. the committee if someone has a complaint against the committee member only immediately the person has to uh, person has to re resign and then the new committee is formed and the case is heard the this committee has to work on the three basic principles of indian uh, indian law that is unbiased judgment a hearing or an unbiased judgment the second is natural justice and third one is confidentiality they have to maintain the confidentiality they cannot go out and talk about the cases registered uh, even against against whom the case is registered the respondent that person's name should also not be mentioned so confidentiality should be mentioned that is very very important criteria for the committee now let's go uh, about the process how the process of filing the complaint so i already told you the aggrieved woman the aggrieved woman should, should file the complaint with, with the incident whenever the incident happen within 3 months of the incident happen if she go i mean she complains after 3 months of the incident the next next 3 more months given to her but with reasons the committee is going to take that okay um so like as i already mentioned about tanushree datta's case so it's like you know 2008 it happened and then 2018 she is coming up so that's why it is into the civil court the outside not in the committee so within 3 months she should register it may be happening for last 3 to 4 years but the last incident whenever it happened from there three three more months she got uh, if she is not in a condition uh, i mean Uh, she is not in a condition to complain then her relatives or the colleagues can uh, make complaint the complaint should always be given in written verbal complaint will not be entertained okay and if the lady is not in a condition to write then the committee itself write the complaint that is also mentioned over there maybe a illiterate lady so the committee itself is going to write about the complaint Uh, let's uh, then uh, the committee 
uh, once the complaint is received by the way the written document should be the copies there should be six copies of the complaint so the five copies will be with the committee the one the person should take an acknowledgement and keep it with herself okay once the complaint is registered the committee has to give the decision within 90 days within 90 days they have to give the decision so first 7 days they just call the meeting they decide whether the complaint should be considered as sexual harassment or not once the uh, complaint is considered as sexual harassment then the letter is given to the charged officer or the respondent whom so were the, uh, are the charges against so i call it as an respondent once the respondent gets the letter it is like 10, within 10 working days the respondent is going to give the reply and then there is the first meeting is called for the conciliation if and it should not be on a monetary basis if both the parties agrees okay then the case case is closed if both the parties uh, do not agree and they want to go for the hearing if the lady says no i want to go for the proper hearing then the committee has to go for the hearing as i said the hearing will be like similar as the civil court and if uh, for the rights of the aggrieved person or the aggrieved lady is that she can ask for you know uh, she can ask for the transfer of the other person she can ask for uh, the change of her department the relocation she can ask for the relocation of the charged person if she is reporting directly to that manager immediately the reporting manager should be changed she is also entitled for 3 months paid leave which is other than the uh, other leaves okay so that is also considered over there so 3 months is 90 days so that is the effective period that is what mentioned so committee has to give the decision within 90 days uh, once this is uh, this is all about and she should also expect the confidentiality if uh, she must always she must provide all the proofs if she is not able to provide the proofs she must give the reason why she is not able to provide all the proof if she is uh, telling so that this 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 person is the witness and witness is not ready to come in come in for the hearing then the committee has full right to call that witness similarly for the respondents the what is the rights of the respondent the respondent again the unbiased hearing natural justice confidentiality he can also demand for all the proofs given against him um one more thing uh, is like you know uh, this with the aggrieved lady is that if she feels that she is scared in front of like the other person speaking in front of the other person she can ask for you know uh, uh the hearing in uh, i mean uh, in in absence of the other person in this case the recordings will be uh, done so this is all about you know the the respond from the respondent also he he can also ask for all the all the proofs shown against him um if both the parties do not agree then they can re appeal to the committee that is again within 3 working or within 3 months so the timeline goes like this the once the complaint is registered 7 days committee decide then the 10 days for the respondent and then the first conciliation meeting and within 90 days the uh, decision should be taken after that committee takes 10 more days to write the reports and then um, after that uh, once the reports are done um, uh, then there is two more months 60 days given to the managing committee or the board of director or the disciplinary committee to take action if within 60 days they are not going to take action then one more month is for the committee members to take action so to in total 6 month the case is closed if someone wants to reappeal they can reappeal uh, the about it there are a lot of cases where you know they the women found the committee to be biased she can ask to re uh, i mean reconstitute the committee also uh, this is i mean uh, i am going little fast i know but uh, because you know one hour is really less so redressal procedure i already mentioned about it what what is to be done in the redressal procedure so let's talk about the determination of compensation which is very important so the organizations uh, in their policy they write about the compensation from their side the compensation can uh, can be in any form maybe the demotion of the person or maybe the salary withholding the salary or 
the compensation can be the community service writing an apology letter it can be uh, even the medical expenses if the lady has undergone any medical uh, treatment so that will be considered over here um so let's talk about i think uh, this is all about the redressal procedure which i already mentioned one thing which is very important to notice is there are two types of cases there is one is probably uh, if i register the case but i may not be able to give sufficient proof so that does not mean that uh, my intentions were bad if i that that can be the case will be close um, i mean without mentioning that the proofs were not sufficient no action will be taken against the lady however if the organization founds that it is because of the malicious intent to to defame someone then the organization have uh, i mean they have their clause in the policy which is mentioned if the with the malicious intent then the actions will be taken against so there are there is a difference between false uh, i mean the no proof complaints and the malicious uh, complaint this is something which is very important to highlight because many of them are uh, on this so let's talk about that is the determination now let's uh, also talk about the consensual relationships when i talk about the consensual relationship it is like committee will take care on this part also uh, till the time it is welcome it is not harassment simple the act was welcome it is not harassment it was agreed bet agreed between two of them but the time when someone says no then after that if it continues then it is harassment very simple so the committee will take care on this part also that when it was said no and then also it is continuously going on then it will be considered as harassment so one more thing uh, is like if in an organization someone is not able to talk or this, this is one more very very important point over here is no lawyer is allowed to attend uh, on behalf or uh, i mean attend the hearing or fight the case on behalf of the aggrieved woman or even for the respondent yes you if you are not able to speak then you can take your friend along with you but the law i mean no lawyer can represent the case that is very important over here another thing is uh, is like which i wanted to highlight over here is at any point the women is allowed to go and complained outside it is like my being an indian citizen i have my legal rights to go and complain and file an fir so it's if i don't want to speak in the committee i don't want to talk in the committee if i feel that committee is not hearing my points i can any point i can go out third point i wanted to talk about is committee uh, uh, is not i mean if the per person is absent from hearing continuously then committee take can take ex parte decisions but they have to send three warning letters to the person that you are not coming and then we are going to take ex parte decisions for both the i mean both the side agreed of a woman also and for the respondent also the last but not the least is about the consent when i say consent it is like if there is silence that doesn't mean that silence is yes this is something which is coming what i had observed in indian culture it is coming from bollywood you know uh, i mean till till the interval the hero is following following the lady and then she is not saying anything that means it is yes you know so silence is not yes it is not that you were present over there you were silent or you were benefiting this will not be considered over here in this there is one more uh, government has made is this about the she box which i wanted to talk about uh, you can complain in she box also uh, on their website the ministry of women and child uh, development so you can make the complaint over there uh, through website over here uh, there is one more women's forum where the complaints can be talked about i mean forum of women in public sector scope here also the discussions can be done so i 
and i know uh, there are many points which i could have covered but still so very quickly if uh, if i have two to three more minutes to talk about uh, um, dr amrita is it okay please ma'am please go ahead sure ma'am please you can continue ma'am please take your time please sure. take it on sure so we are already you. going houseful ma'am <laughs> thank you uh, so when i talk about you know when i talk about this uh, there are certain international laws also uh, well uh, in the, in i mean uh, indian law act came very very late there are already a lot of laws uh, internationally which i already mentioned over there international humanitarian law international human rights law customary law a lot of i mean us uk law because why i mentioned this because there are a lot of mncs who are working with them so uh, it is uh, i mean there, there there are law all over the world against this when i say about the posh act you know the posh act uh, people get confused with this poxo poxo is not, it is for the child below 18 years so for the schools and all it is like juvenile it comes under juvenile rights okay however for wherever there are 18 years and above for example when we talk about uh, the universities also or the colleges where the i mean all the 18 years and above they must form the committee they must form the committee over here okay so there's a difference when i talk about the schools for example the schools uh, for the kids it is poxo but for the teachers it is posh committee uh, i mean ic committee so if 10 or more than 10 teachers are working in the school they are liable to form i mean they they must form the committee if the committee is not formed then they are going against the compliance uh, if any organization which is going against the compliance then there is 50000 rupees fine uh, if it is repetitive offense then even the business license uh, can be cancelled okay so which is very important over here uh, i mean following the compliance for the committee actually or all the organization they must uh, they must submit the annual report to the district officer if uh, irrespective of the case registered or not so even if the case is not registered they uh, they have to mention that no case registered but they have to submit it also goes into the director's report so whenever the director's report is written the if there also he has to mention that the we have the committee and the number of cases registered uh, that is very important over here uh, another thing is like let's talk about the introspection with this uh, you know um it hides like you know mostly men dominated uh, sectors are there there are gender based uh, this is completely actually you know i know after this session many men are going to ask me question what about us you know uh, this is one sided policy yes it is one sided policy like dowry i do agree on that however a one sided act like dowry but however you know may i know all the mncs uh, all the mncs and most of even the indian uh, uh, companies they have a po gender neutral policy so as an organization if you are framing policy please frame gender neutral policy so when i say gender neutral policy the all the all the cases registered within the com organization within the committee it will be it will be uh, taken as gender neutral once the case goes out in lcc that is local compliance committee then it is gender specific only for women which is already mentioned over here another thing which is which is somewhere like you know about the financial uh, compensation where people uh, i mean yes undue advantages sometimes are taken and it is kind of a discriminatory part over here i'm talking about the financial compensation government has very clearly mentioned that the first uh, reconciliation meeting when you are going to call it shouldn't be based on uh, financial compensation however i mean there are people uh, who settle on this part also uh there are loopholes i am not saying there are a lot of loopholes uh, in this like as i mentioned about this lodging the complaints results in uh, you know isolation of women both by employer and by colleagues so this is one of the drawbacks over here uh 
probably and then it is also like you know uh, someone is complaining so the more kind of a harassment uh, more violent harassment may happen there are cases which we can see uh, over here you can uh, the last point is very interesting for me is about the fiki wiki saying that 30% indian companies and 25% mncs are not compliant still there are many companies which are not compliant so who is keeping eye on that you know if if any case arises then it comes into the media and then they uh, overnight the committee is formed overnight the decisions are taken and all those things i know many of the places where i get a call suddenly like from tomorrow onwards you be our external member and then the next day i realize oh there is a case and i there is a case hearing and overnight the committee is formed so there is no awareness in the organization people are not even aware so, so some the, then the lady who might have read somewhere and then she is demanding about the committee so this is something which is uh, happening uh, i mean this is the current scenario i see over here you know so there are loopholes one more thing i wanted to point out is there is no suo moto action taken in this particular uh, you know i mean um, posh act so the, no one can take suo moto action suo moto action is nothing but like immediate arrest like as in down in case there is i think so the suo moto action taken up so this is all uh, which i wanted to highlight in today's session uh, there may be many more points as i said i am very passionate about talking about this particular topic i can go on and on and on i can talk uh, a lot on this this topic if you wish uh, if you wish to i mean you know talk or if you wish to know more about it you can connect me anytime my website is also already there uh i i uh, mean uh, we can talk in detail on this uh, over here on this forum i have limited time i try to uh, i mean what should i say i try to compress it as much as possible i try to give you as much as information i can give you in this one hour uh, so in the end i will only say that a woman is like a tea bag you can't tell how strong she is until you put her in hot water so never attempt that okay so thanks thanks for you know listening to me i hope you all enjoyed the session it is informative for you all uh, definitely as i said like one hour is less to talk talk on this topic i wish i could have got more time to talk on this i i am sure uh, so there is another 15 more minutes where we can take up question and answers thank you very much once again yes over to you dr amrita uh thank you ma'am thanks a lot uh ma'am with your due permission uh, can we go ahead with the question answer sessions yes please yeah ma'am the first question is from miss vidya bhani reddy she says that can sexual harassment be perpetrated by someone of a same sex okay uh see when i talk about this posh act uh, you know it has as i said there are a lot of loopholes even the language is like not consistent somewhere they had written as woman and somewhere they had written as a person so uh, one thing the second part as i said like you know before like it, it this act was in 2013 after that that there is 377 came you know so there are i mean lot of amendments are going to happen at the moment so it is all on the policies of the organization how they are going to take it so at the moment uh, as per 2013 government has only two genders male and female later on government agreed on that there is a same sex marriages can happen yeah so i hope i answered your question on this thank you ma'am ma'am the next question is from ganga dharan he asks uh even though laws are made to punish the people who are involved in sexual harassment but it is not controlled not controlled right now how to avoid or stop this harassment okay so as uh, making of law is one of the so serious is one of the okay see there are lot of laws already uh, in uh, i mean indian when we talk about indian constitution how many of us are following the traffic laws 
none of us probably i will say you know we wear helmet only once we see once we see that there is a traffic policeman standing over here there yeah. similarly with the organization you know once there is a policy then we can uh, deter people at least they are aware so awareness is Uh, very important it's like today also if i am conducting it is more about the awareness session so i am really happy we are going house full and then so many people they they will come to know about this awareness they will i am sure one person is definitely going to talk another two person about that this is, this is the law and this is what we should expect from our organization so awareness is something which should be more rather than you know punishment thank you ma'am yeah. ma'am next question is from ashish pande he <laughs> says that uh, do you feel that the government is taking genuine steps to uh, to assist women in the matters of sexual harassment at work please yes i will say yes they are taking because right now i already mentioned about the she box even that forums the scope forum i mentioned uh government is doing in uh, in fact uh, i i really don't know how much the delhi government has worked on it but i read in the newspaper that arvind kejriwal has asked about spreading this awareness in uh, the local community everywhere even in the slums where the domestic helpers are living they they should go and tell them so yes however it is like a responsibility of every indian citizen that they should spread this awareness government is doing their part uh, organization should understand they should follow the compliance uh, recently in last two years what i observed is whenever any organization is going for the business license renewal there is one uh, one check box where they have to tick as whether uh, are you posh compliant or not so they ask all the reports all the committee members name and everything so uh, you will see changes over the period up on this thank you ma'am ma'am the next question is from siddharth narula he asks what is the relevant of vishakha guidelines in today's current time uh, yes good question i will say because again it is a very gender specific uh, when i conduct the session i tell all the ladies all the women is like have guts to say no first of all you should say no to people you know it's not the last job you're working in you should be aware about it yeah, and yes uh, the scenarios are changing culturally india is also changing a lot you know there are a lot of as i 377 now so uh, it is just one sided in vishakha guidelines but yes if the guidelines are given it is easy for the organizations to work on it thank you thank you ma'am ma'am the next question is from varsha she says that uh, gender discrimination is also done in the when there are vacancies in jobs specifically in jobs such as receptionist when an office has to appoint a receptionist they want only a female a male can be also appointed so is this a gender discrimination over there yes i do agree on this there is a gender discrimination it's like especially receptionist or hospitality industries you can see where or even like you know the airlines now they have they started taking up the, you know the, they call it now they are calling it as crew members earlier it was air hostesses you know so a lot of education should be there as it is still people have to come to the terms uh, that like you know any job can be done by anyone when i say simple word as nurse automatically you will say she is going to take care of where the nurse it is not that the nursing is only for females when i was in thailand i had seen a lot of male nurses also over there yeah so I, even in the hospitals you go healthcare industry now you see that there are i mean we call them as brothers now here sisters and brothers yeah so yes gender discrimination is there uh, as per government it is not allowed but uh, something which is from our belief system somewhere mentally it is deep rooted uh, society will take time to overcome that thank you ma'am thanks a lot uh next question is from artisha she says that uh should we what should we do when a woman faces a sexual harassment in public place 
Okay, so when women faces uh, sexual harassment in public places, then there is a local compliance committee where you can go and talk about it. Uh, you can complain on that where. However, again, stand up for your rights, you know. Uh, you should, once you say no, I mean, women are really strong and you have to believe in yourself, you know. Why are you accepting that? Sometimes what happens is we silently accept. We just move away. The person uh, is encouraged this way. He feels that, you know, she is weak. She is going to accept this. So one, the very first point is start, start voicing out for this and start supporting other ladies also. So that's how uh, I will uh, su suggest. Or best is... Uh, Somewhere it is my responsibility also how, how I should behave. So it's a uh, both-sided. I will not say that it is only one-sided somewhere. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, the next question is from Pushpa Malla. She says that is sexual harassment a criminal matter? Definitely, as I already mentioned about it. Uh, it is already there. It is a criminal matter in case of heinous crimes like rape and all. And uh, go, uh, you can go and file an FIR anytime. It is like it is not necessary that you should only and only speak to IC. If I feel because being an Indian citizen, I can go. I have my freedom. I have that right and can file the case outside. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, with your permission, a few more questions. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, next question is from Advocate Amthi Agarwal. Uh, she, she says that, what if a boy is blackmailing a girl by saying, I will leak your pictures and disclose each and everything regarding our relationship after they already broken up? That is sexual harassment. Yes, sir. This also comes under sexual harassment at workplace. Okay, uh, if boy and the girl is working at, uh, I mean, they are doing business. They are working together. If they are working together and they are doing business, then it will come under workplace. If they are not working, then it is not at workplace. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, the next question is from Ankit Gupta. Ankit says, the act of a girl is legitimate to prove that she's innocent. What about the innocent male colleague if he's guilty of sexual harassment just to defame him out of the personal grudge or the outrage? Okay. Uh, I, I guess I had already mentioned in the end about this. Uh, the One is like no proof complaint and the another one is a malicious complaint. So if committee finds that it is malicious complaint, definitely they are going to take action against uh, the lady. Uh, and if if you are not satisfied with the committee's decision, you can definitely file a case of defamation. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, the next question is from Payal Bhuttada. She says that mental harassment is also considered under POSH Act. Uh, okay, there are two types of, when I say harassment, a sexual harassment is always like, you know, the... Harassment is happening because of the sexual favors, sexual request. If you remember, the first slide I showed is something which is unwelcome, intimidating enough, interfering enough, repetitive enough. And it is because of this, I am like, you know, uh, because of this sexual request or sexual favors asked, I'm not feeling well, I am mentally harassed. Then it is sexual harassment. It can be the, the harass, it is not, I mean, where the sexual favors or sexual requests are not done, but there are other types of mental harassment, then it will not be considered as posh, under POSH Act. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, next question is from Afta Balam. He says that, ma'am, if a male is harassed by a female boss in office, what is the solution then? Okay, no, that will come under as workplace harassment and that will be taken into disciplinary committee of the organization. However, if the organization is going with a gender neutral policy, then it will be considered into, uh, I mean, they, they, it will be taken in a similar manner as portion act. So it is all on the, the organization's policy, how they are going to take it up. I have Thank seen you, I have seen cases where you know senior female uh, boss is harassing male member on this and she's 
uh, and she was fired after this because uh, luckily the organization has gender neutral policy thank you ma'am ma'am next question is from miss kamini ahuja a solicitor in mumbai she says that a complaint has been launched by a female employer against a male employee upon becoming aware of aware the male employee stops attending the office what remedy is available for the female employee okay so uh, this is very common normally it happens that i once i come to know that okay complaint is against me i either i stop attending the office or i resign immediately so organizations already ha have to work on their service policy also so you know the that is 3 months notice period fine full and final payment will be given or the character certificate or a no due certificate will be given once all these cases are cleared so this person will not get full and final so all this again the organizations has to work it's not only about just uh, implementing the posh act that's that's where when i draft the policies for the organization i always ask about what is your service policy what is your code of conduct what is your disciplinary policy saying uh, all those uh, what is your service agreement is all going to talk about so that is where in a 3 months period i already mentioned committee is going to give the decision in 3 months similarly that 3 months period so from today the complaint is lodged and the per person is not coming so his payment is withheld and then that can be compensated uh, for the lady uh, also ma'am can ex parte order can be one thing ex parte yes 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 definitely i mean three warning letters will be given to that person and even if that person is not going to come over there then they write write down i mean they write a letter that ex parte decision will be taken and which should be acceptable to you uh even extreme cases then uh, committee has to file an fir uh, uh, committee itself goes and file an fir uh, against the person the and committee is going to help the lady to file an fir against the person in extreme cases thank you ma'am ma'am the next question is from rajesh kumar mishra he says that if the identity of the victim is disclosed by the member of the lcc then can a case be registered against them if yes then under which provisions kindly guide yes uh, if the ident in fact in this posh act itself it is already mentioned confidentiality so even the witness who is coming or all the members who are coming for the hearing should maintain the uh, confidentiality there is the fine of rupees 5000 already mentioned over there in this uh, you know so it is always almost like a civil court so when you, when you go for the hearing you might have seen in the civil court we take oath in the name of geeta right or whatever the thing so we say that okay so that is what you are lying against it when the identity so it is already mentioned over there that i will not disclose the identity so confidentiality if disclosed then uh, there is a fine uh, rupees 5000 even for the witness or even the lady aggrieved woman cannot go out and talk that okay i had filed the case again xyz yeah thank you ma'am Uh, ma'am if you don't mind some more questions yeah please yeah uh take uh, next question is from siddharth he says that taking into consideration charges of sexual harassment made by a woman for example section 354 of ipc the offense of which are cognizable and non available how relevant is the committee and the procedure followed by it uh, can you please repeat the question one more time yeah, ma'am ma'am uh, siddharth says taking into consideration the charges of sexual harassment made by a woman before the committee uh, she has another option which is section 354 of ipc okay which is a non available and a, a, a cognizable offense so how relevant is the committee and the procedures followed by the committee see it is uh, it is all individuals right whether she wants to approach to the committee or not if she she feels that she shouldn't approach to the committee and she wants to register the case outside she is allowed she is free to do that however once the case is gone outside then she is not entitled for that 3 months leave or all those process 90 days procedure then that that uh, i mean once the case is outside it will take its own time she cannot demand that that okay now within 90 days please solve my case and i can i want to leave and all those things 
and once the case is gone out again they will also ask why you had not approached your own committee whether the committee is or there or not what is the reason they will again police will again ask like you know they will come and do the inquiry in the organization about it thank you ma'am thanks for that update uh, the next question is from aniket solanki he says that if a female child a student is sexually harassed uh, which act will come into picture posh or something else see as i already mentioned 18 and above is all posh if student i mean i'm talking about the student so and again the student is harassed by the male member of the university any of them even uh, who's over is there right so a university or the college if it is 18 and below then it is like you know under juvenile this thing and that goes under pox so. thank you ma'am thanks a lot ma'am last question from the from a student uh, ekta jain she says that what is the time limit to file the complaint of work harassment what is may, may i time limit as i said 3 months within the last incident happened whenever the last incident happened she should complain within 3 months of the last incident happened and if within 3 months she is not able to complain then another 3 month 3 more months are with her but however she must mention the reason why uh, that 3 months not there thank you ma'am thanks a lot for uh, that marathon question and answer session mm -hmm. uh, uh, and really highly obliged to listen to that uh, answers ma'am uh, over to you pooja ma'am please thank you so much salim sir for wonderfully moderating today's session thank you so much archana ma'am for giving those insights on behalf of kl family i would like to extend my sincere gratitude and heartfelt thanks to mrs archana shastri madam for educating all of us on this such insightful session and the much required topic for today uh, relating to harassment of women i would like to thank madam for sharing insights not only on the posh but also on constitutional law ipc with uh, the relevant case laws where the participants enjoyed and have understood the concepts in a much easier manner thank you so much ma'am i would now request our principal sir to kindly address our guest speaker and participants पार्टिसिपेंट्स and no doubt about that uh, uh having said that i mean uh, this is a fourth webinar series of uh, kle society's uh, kle law college and i am very much happy that today is the last session and such a beautiful uh, uh, i mean uh, session we have uh, seen all together uh, i mean uh, we have witnessed so many participants and uh, it's wonderful to uh, and a lot of experience in this particular field uh, we have also had uh, we started this uh, session uh, almost uh, um uh, we started in the session uh, yes then the next is bakyoda mishra gujarat high court then we had the uh, dr uh, uh, ms kamath nand kumar dr uh, uh, mishra financial uh, uh, advisor for uh, uh, consumer nagaratna madam from uh, associate professor national law school and dr uh, mallik arjunaya uh, the principal of kle law college so i am uh, thankful to all the 
participants, my team, especially who have taken a lot of efforts uh, to congratulate them for consistently. I would like to also thank uh, all the coordinators of. Uh, I would like to also thank all my Delhi teachers. Uh, 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 it is uh, uh, Professor T. Vidya or Professor Salim Khan who have done a wonderful job by uh, uh, doing the moderation in uh, various sessions. I am also thankful for such a wonderful participants across the country and uh, international participants as well. And I am highly obliged uh, to the management of KLE Society, especially Dr. Prabhakar Koreji, who is the chairman of KLE Law Society. And uh, I would like to also uh, thank uh, uh, Sri Mahantesh Kapitikamad, sir, who is the GB chairman of uh, Kaili Law College. And uh, I am also thankful uh, to Dr. Malika Amlor and director of Kaili Law Academy and all the management people and GB members. First, and uh, thank you very much, uh, all of you. Now I declare officially this closed. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank. Thank you so much, Principal Sir. Thank you, Madam. Thank you so much, Principal Sir, for your blessings and guidance to organize uh, the webinar series, Sir. Thank you for your support. Uh, sir, with your permission, uh, can we end the webinar? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Please, please, please. Go. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Archana, ma'am, for joining us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, participants.